Well, as we continue to talk about this election season, we want to bring this home as early voting is about to kick off within the state. And that happens tomorrow, Saturday, October 17th. And as many people have been following the news around the country, you have to wonder what the environment is going to be like when you decide to go out and cast your vote if you do it in person. For more information on what you can expect, I'm bringing in Ryan Walsh from the Springfield, Springfield Police Department. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us uh, and shedding information on what voters uh, can look forward to starting on the 17th. Thank you very much for having me. So let's just let's look at when you look at what's happening around the country. Can, can you shed any light to people that might be a little anxious uh, just kind of on what the plan is for really uh, this large part of Western Mass? Yeah, we don't anticipate really uh, any significant problems here in Springfield. Uh, presidential election years obviously bring out a higher number of voters, but with uh, the coronavirus pandemic and people with, uh, with the extra options for early voting, that could uh, lead to some of the numbers still voting but staying at home and not causing quite the long lines that you may see once or twice a day early in the morning or around dinner time. So are you guys not anticipating that people are going to come out maybe in larger numbers than they have in the past? I could see the numbers being similar to what we've seen for past presidential election years, but uh, you know, quite possibly 20% of those people who come out to vote or, or even more might be doing it beginning tomorrow. What plans maybe have you guys kind of thought about just in case there is a rush of people that decide they're actually going to come out and wait if there is a wait. <laughs> well, state law requires a police officer to be stationed at every precinct in the city or polling place. Some locations have two polling places, so you might see two police officers there. Just uh, with the past, the issues that our officers see are usually very minor. They're there to help the, the election warden that's at each precinct or the to assist the election commissioner. Mm -hmm. Most of the issues that we see in the past are people who are supporters of one person or another don't understand there's a, a 50 foot or so barrier that they need to stay away from the polling location to hold their sign. Other than that, in, in the Springfield's recent recent history, there's really not been any issues on election day. And how many different areas will you guys be set up in starting tomorrow? Uh, starting tomorrow, they are not there. So the early voting, there's different spots in the city at City Hall. Uh, or you can mail it in that you can drop off ballots. So there's drop off locations, but those uh, won't necessarily be the precincts. And then for November 3rd? November 3rd, there's 64 different precincts across the city uh, that officers will be stationed at. So it's spread out pretty well. So uh, even if there is a rush, there's so many different precincts across our 32 square miles of the city. Uh, it doesn't get jammed up too much. Wow, that's a lot though still, isn't it? 64. And then you have to imagine that there will be some people as you mentioned, that, you know, do decide to stay home. But, you know, we're speaking to a lot of voters that say they actually are going to come out to make sure that their vote is counted. Yeah, I mean, you're going to see that. But with any pre presidential election year, you're going to see a high number of voters or a higher number of voters. In Springfield, uh, historically, uh, it, it's been a Democratic city for voting for the Democratic candidate for president. So there's not really that uh, give and take you might see in other swing states or swing areas. Springfield's kind of been uh, uh, very democratic in terms of their voting history. So maybe in areas of Pennsylvania or Wisconsin, Michigan, those really big swing states, you might see some of the issues you're alluding to. I just don't anticipate it here in Springfield. I know. Well, one would think that, right? But then you look at North Carolina, you look at Georgia. North Carolina's always been red, and they are literally seeing record numbers. I, I do get what you're saying, though. This area is probably more Democratic. But I think we, we need to focus on the first-time voters because lots of those voters are coming out in this region, too. Yeah, there'll be a lot of voters. And another thing that may, may not lead to a, a huge impact is I believe in Springfield, and this is only part of Springfield, there's only one other contested race for state rep, and that's only a portion of the city. So uh, most of these races for everything from Congress to state senator, state rep, were decided back on September, in September at the primary, uh, whereas uh, it's, it's the presidential race here that, that they're going to vote for on, in November. 
Brian, let's talk about the safety precautions and measures that maybe you guys have discussed within the department for November 3rd. Um, are there any in place? I mean, obviously, I know, you know, people are supposed to social distance and things like that, but any extra precautions that you guys are planning on uh, for November 3rd across the 64 districts or points of interest? No, not for the police department necessarily. That There might be some advisories from the health department or the election commissioner. Uh, when I went to vote on, uh, on primary day in person, one of the things that was uh, new to me is they said, keep the pencil that you're writing with. They didn't want that back. So for the coronavirus precautions, uh, the COVID-19 precautions, you may see to make sure people are socially distant and, and keeping their uh, six foot while they're going into the building. All the places where you vote are spread out uh, with, with that safe social distance uh, already in place. So, you know, I, on a police side, no, nothing, nothing yet for, for actual the uh, day of the, uh, the election day. But there will be some enforcement of the COVID safety precautions. Yeah, the enforcement is there, but a lot of it is personal responsibility. So, you know, no one in the Springfield Police Department is looking to go give out a ticket to someone who's not, not following. It's going to be an advisement. Um, advise them to put on their mask and, and make sure they're following those proper safety precautions in indoor buildings. Uh, but what we've seen throughout these last six months or so that we've been dealing with this is that Springfield and the residents of Springfield have done a pretty good job of that and, and, and making sure that they're wearing their masks when they're going into businesses. We just haven't had a lot of issues with that. So we don't anticipate it on election day either. That's great. We do know that that is going to be an important day. It's going to be a rush, uh, but it's good to know that all 64 areas are going to be covered with, what would you say, about two cops per, two, two police officers per district? It'll be one police officer for every polling location or uh, precinct. Some polling locations of the 64 are in, uh, are in the same location. So uh, let, let me rephrase that. So we have 64 uh, precincts. Some are in the same polling location. So you might see two officers there, precincts share a school. Okay, that's clear. Well, I mean, it's important to have you on, Ryan, because voters are asking, you know, what is it going to be like when I approach the polls if I decide to actually go in person? So it's good to kind of calm everyone uh, and let them know that Springfield Police Department has everything under control. It, it, you know, and safety-wise, people should, like you said, follow the statewide uh, guidelines and just, you know, personally be safe. Yeah, everyone, you know, it's same as going to the grocery store, waiting in line. If you have a little patience on election day, uh, you know, everything's going to be smooth sailing, we hope and we anticipate. And we just want everyone to get out to vote, whether it's early voting or, or voting in person or through the mail, whatever it may be. We just want people to exercise the right to vote.